Ladies and gentlemen, can you ever go wrong with the Willie Nelson number? No, you cannot. Little number there, sang with uh, Leanne Womack, Mendocino County Line. Never can go wrong with Willie Nelson. Can you go wrong determining whether a series converges or diverges? Absolutely. And it's going to get tougher and tougher when we bring in more tests and more, more topics into the whole discussion of series. What are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about the ratio test. What the ratio test does, it's a test to assist us in determining if a series converges. More importantly, it may be where a power series or converges, or if the series converges absolutely or not. So we've got to come up with some definitions first. We have a definition. So what the heck is this thing that we're talking about? Absolute convergence. Absolutely converges. Absolute convergence. Not, not what, what, you, what you have to do is, this is going to be difficult enough on its own. We've got to keep this as simple as possible. So, let's, let's, hey, let's define absolute convergence. If a series converges, absolutely. A series converges, absolutely. If and only if the series of the absolute value of those terms converges. So if the absolute value of that series converges, then we say that series converges absolutely. And here's a nice little theorem. If the absolute value of that series converges, then that series converges. Thank you. If the absolute value of that series converges, then that series converges. We have to be very careful with most of our theorems in calculus. We, ha we, have to, we have to think about the converse. Whenever you see a theorem, you must think about the converse of that theorem and say, hmm, is the converse true? The, th the converse of this particular theorem is not true. So we'll keep that, keep that in mind. Okay. So we've got the definition of absolute convergence. I've got this theorem that if the absolute value of a series converges, then the, se then the uh, series converges. Let's talk about the ratio test. Let's define what the ratio test is. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, I want to try to keep this video as short as possible, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, hopefully 20 minutes, so at any time you can press the pause button and pause and take some notes and think. And there's going to be a couple examples that you're certainly going to want to pause on. You hear me there? Okie dokie. Pay attention, please. Okay, so here's the ratio test. Consider some series from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n. If the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n, if the limit of the absolute value of that ratio is less than 1, hence the ratio test, then that series converges. Keep in mind, we're just, we looked at this when we were talking about geometric series. We looked at this ratio of the n plus 1 term divided by the nth term to determine the common ratio. And that's what we're just doing here. We're just doing there. We're looking at the ratio of the n plus 1 term divided by the nth term. And we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity of that ratio, the absolute value of that ratio. And if that, if that limit comes out to less than 1, then that series converges. Sweet! Very nice. Going to be very useful. Hey, what about if that limit is greater than 1? If that limit is greater than 1, then we can say definitively by this test that that series diverges. What if that limit is equal to 1? What if that limit is equal to 1? Oh, 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 oh. Well, if the limit is equal to the one, then maybe it converges, maybe not. What we say is the test is inconclusive, and we have to go to another test. Okay? So pause, think, pause, and think. Let's go on to an example. Thank you very much. Let's try this example right here. What I want to do is use the ratio test to determine if this series 
series as n goes to 1, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 to the n over 3n plus 1, if it converges or not, I'm going to use the ratio test on this. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity, side step in there, and the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus 1 term divided by the nth term. This is the nth term, this is the n plus 1 term. Wherever you see n, you're going to put n plus 1. Okay, and now think about this. As n goes to infinity, and where, where n is greater than 1, everything's going to be positive. So don't have to worry about the absolute value. Everything's positive. Okay, so this limit is equal to the 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n. Bam. I'm going to pull that guy out. Flip that guy and multiply. So I'm going to have 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n times 3 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 plus 1. If you need to pause the video and see how I got from here to here, you pause the video. I got rid of the absolute value because everything's positive. Hey, by laws of exponents, 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n is just 2. Now look at this. 3 to the n plus 1 is going to be 3 times 3 to the n. Now let's think about that. Think about that rascal right now. As n goes to infinity, this 1 is going to be insignificant. 3 to the n is so big, the 1 doesn't matter, insignificant. Like matters, 3 times 3 to the n, this, this plus 1 is going to be insignificant. So you're going to have 3 to the n divided by 3 times 3 to the n. Oh, those guys are just going to cancel. They're the same thing. And keep in mind, with this, this factor of this limit, you could use the whole Patel's rule also. Because you have this thing going to infinity and this thing going to infinity, so you can implore the Hopital's rule and easily determine that the, this factor, as n goes to infinity, goes to one third. So therefore, this entire limit is equal to that, which is equal to that, is equal to two thirds. So what can I say? Well, well, I can say that that limit of the n plus one term over the nth term is equal to two thirds. And I know that 2 thirds is less than 1, so what do I know? I know that this rascal right here, this series, converges by the ratio test. There are, there are uh, probably a, at least a couple other tests that I could use on this particular series. This was a nice example using the ratio test. The direct comparison test would be another test that we can, uh, we can use to determine that thing converges. Next example. Ooh, next example. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa. Oh, man. Does that thing converge? Does the series, as n goes to, from n, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n factorial divided by 2 n plus 1 factorial, does that rascal converge or diverge? Ooh, heavens to Betsy. Let's use the ratio test on that, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. So I've got the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus 1 term divided by the nth term. Wherever I see n, I'm going to put n plus 1. n plus 1 factorial, n plus 1 in for that n. I'm going to put n plus 1 in for that n. 2 times n plus 1 plus 1 factorial divided by the nth term. This is the nth term here, n factorial, 2n plus 1 factorial. That's the nth term, n plus 1 term. Keep in mind, again, n is greater than 1, n going to infinity, all this stuff is going to be positive. So I don't need the absolute value, guys. And so now, what does that limit equal? Well, that limit is going to be this n plus 1 factorial over n factorial times this guy on the complete top, 2n plus 1 factorial divided by 2n, oh, 2n plus 3. This is going to equal 2n plus 3. 2 times n is 2n plus 2, plus 3, that's where the 2n plus 3 factorial came from. That guy is equal to this. And I moved him all the way up top side. So now I have this. And I need to evaluate this. And this is, this can be a bit, uh, oh, a bit elusive for some elementary math students. But once you, once you start thinking about the definition of n factorial, be able to determine what this is. And I've got a little, a brief little discussion here. Well, what is n plus 1 factorial? What does that mean? 
5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 8 factorial is 8 times 7. Well, n plus 1 factorial then is going to be n plus 1. Subtract 1 times n, subtract 1, subtract all the way down to 1. Well, n plus 1 factorial is simply going to be n plus 1 times, oh, this guy here is n factorial. So n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. Therefore, n plus 1 factorial divided by n factorial is simply n plus 1. Woo, sweet. True enough. 5 factorial divided by 4 factorial is 5. Think about it. Okay, so this part here is just going to be n plus 1, this guy right here. And now look at this. Now I have 2n plus 1 factorial divided by 2n plus 3 factorial. Well, what's 2n plus 1 factorial? It's 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 minus 1, which is 2n factorial. 2n minus 1 all the way down to 1. What's 2n plus 3 factorial? That's going to be 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 3 minus 1, which is 2n plus 2, times 2n plus 1, oh, times 2n plus 1 factorial. Well, look, that's what I had up at top here was 2n plus 1 factorial. I know it's equal to that, but look, I can just, bam, this whole thing is 2n plus 1 factorial. This guy is going to cancel with this, so what do I have? I just have 1 over these two binomials here. Nice! 1 over 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2. So what does our limit equal up here? Okay, so if I think about that, so this part here, that is going to be n plus 1. This factor is going to be 1 over 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2. Now think about that. Think about that if I were going to multiply that out. Don't forget what you already know. Don't forget what you came into this class knowing. And just think about this as a function of x, as x goes to infinity. Where does this go? Well, that plus 1 doesn't matter. And what's, what's going to matter is I go to n, as n goes to infinity, I'm only looking at the first term here. What's the first term of that thing multiplied out? 4n squared. What's the first term of this? n. What's n over 4n squared? 1 over 4 to the n. And as n goes to infinity, true or false, this guy goes to 0. 0 is less than 1. 0 is less than 1. That's nice. So since 0 is less than 1, let's see if I can have a result down here. I do. Since, so now I know since 0 is less than 1, the series from n equals 1 to infinity of n factorial over 2n plus 1 factorial converges by the ratio test. Oh, one more example. If you need to pause these, please do one more example. So let's use the ratio test right here. Pause, and now we're back. We're going to see, this looks like a power series. It is. We're going to see where the series from n equals 1 to infinity of quantity 3x minus 2 to the n over n. We're going to see where that converges. And we're going to think about the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. So we're going to use the ratio test to determine when this power series converges, i.e., find the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. Let's use a ratio test. Let's implore the ratio test right there. So here's what we have. We have the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus 1 term divided by the nth term. Ooh, ooh now we have to keep our absolute value signs there because we've got this, this function of x there, this 3x minus 2. We have, to, we have to make sure that that thing stays positive. And so we're going to leave our absolute value symbols over that. And so we have 3x minus 2 to the n plus 1 over 3x minus 2 to the n times... Now, we know all the n, all the n factors are going to be positive because n is greater than 1 as n is going to infinity. So I have n over n plus 1. That's annoying, that bell, but now it's gone. 
And so now I'm taking this limit as n goes to infinity of this guy times this guy. What is 3x minus 2 to the n plus 1 divided by 3x minus 2 to the n? Just 3x minus 2. Hey, as n goes to infinity, where does n over n plus 1 go? Where does n over n plus 1 go as n goes to infinity? This guy goes to 1, so this factor is 1. So I'm really only thinking about the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of 3x minus 2. Well, as n goes to infinity, that just remains the absolute value of 3x minus 2. And now I'm going to use the ratio test, and I want to force that thing to be less than 1, the absolute value. I'm just going to, hey, this limit, this whole limit here equaled absolute value of 3x minus 2. I want that thing to converge by the ratio test, so I'm going to let it be less than 1 there. And I'm going to solve this simple absolute value equation. Negative 1 is less than 3x minus 2, blah, blah, add 2. 1 is less than 3x is less than 3. 1 third is less than x is less than 1. That gives us an interval of convergence to determine. But what do we know from that statement right there? Well, the interval of convergence is going to be 1 third to 1. The radius of convergence will be half that, which is 2 thirds. But wait. Wait here, ladies and gentlemen. What we have to do at this point, and this is for another video. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this 1 third. Because keep in mind, this is the interval in terms of x of convergence, in terms of x. So we're going to take this 1 third, and then we're going to put him in for that x, and we're going to examine that series. We're going to take this 1 and put him in for that x and examine that series. And then we're going to determine whether the interval of convergence is going to be, if it's going to include 1 third of 1, or if it's just going to include 1 third not 1, or not 1 third and 1, or if it's going to be not include either one-third or one, nor one. But that's for another video. But we certainly can tell the radius of convergence, which is half of that is going to be two-thirds. Half of this distance from one-third to one is half of that distance. Half of that distance. The distance is two-thirds. Half of that distance, thank you very much, is going to be one-third. So the radius of convergence is one-third. Okay, so another series test, a ratio test. Watch this. Got some problems assigned with it. Thank you very much.